Hi, and welcome to Scruffy Tales. First off, I want to apologize for my poor microphone, but a new one is on the shopping list. I promise. Uh, my channel is still in its early beginning, so while the videos won't be the most advanced, I hope my content will still be interesting. Now, with that out of the way... There's been a lot of talk about the Western tanks that will be handed over to Ukraine. And the internet is overflowing with discussions on which tank is the best. So, naturally, I feel compelled to make my own video on this subject. First off, the Abrams, Leopard and Challenger are all three fully capable and effective weapon systems. They work. They are fully functional main battle tanks. But where's the fun in simply accepting this very basic truth? No, we need to summon the inner geek and look at this through the lens of the internet and speculate on topics we have little to no knowledge of. So which tank is the best? Well, thankfully, we have a couple of trials and tests that we can lean back on to try and come up with an answer. We can start with the earliest matchup between the Abrams and the Leopard, the Swedish trials of the early 90s. In short, the Swedish trials concluded that the Leopard 2 improved, was better off-road, and was better at targeting and hitting the enemy compared to the Abrams M1A2, and the Leopard 2 also only required half the amount of fuel compared to the Abrams. The trials also found out that the Leopard 2 improved had better armor than the export version of the Abrams. Then we have the strong Europe Challenge competitions. Here the tanks and the crews are put through several tests to see how well the vehicles operate and how well trained the crew are. In 2016, out of six nations participating, the US provided two platoons of tanks with crew, the Abrams ended up in 5th and 6th place. 1st, 2nd and 3rd place were taken by Leopard 2s, with Germany in the top. In 2017, the US took third place out of six. First and second place were taken by Leopard 2s. Germany came in second. And in 2018, the US came in seventh place out of eight. First, second and third place were taken by Leopard 2s. Germany coming in at the top once more. The UK participated this year and ended up in sixth place ahead of the US. The US used M1A2 SEPV2 in each competition and used units from the US Army, not the National Guard in other words, professional soldiers. I think that is worth pointing out. And since I'm Swedish, I don't mind pointing out that Sweden took second place in 2018 operating the modified Leopard 2 variant called SVRV-122. Strong Europe Challenge is a true test of both the vehicles and the crews participating, hosted by the US and Germany, and the results of these competitions do provide a measure of quality concerning both the capabilities of the vehicles and the level of training concerning the crews. When it comes to the NATO tank competition of Iron Spear of 2019 and 2020, we note that the Abrams has not grabbed first place here either, while that honor has fallen to the Leclerc and the Leopard 2. So, we have data slash information slash testing from 30 years ago up to only a few years ago. And they all clearly show the same results. The Leopard 2 outperforms the Abrams M1A2 at every turn. Moreover, it appears that if you want a properly trained tanker crew, you should ask the Germans to train them. Not only that, but even the US Army says that the Abrams requires a lot of logistics in order to function properly. Not only in terms of fuel, but also with expert mechanics and engineers that can repair the tank, 
using expensive parts on top of it all. So, we can now conclude that when compared to the Leopard 2, the Abrams is the inferior tank. American crews do not appear to be as well trained as German crews, and you need a lot more fuel to keep the Abrams operational, and you need more advanced equipment and more specialists to repair the Abrams compared to a Leopard 2. So which tank do you think Ukraine needs the most? The tank that is not as good off-road? The tank that is not as good at spotting and hitting targets? The tank that requires twice the amount of fuel? The tank that is way more expensive to maintain logistically? I haven't even touched on the Challenger 2 because since there's so few of them and the fact that it doesn't have a smooth bore barrel like all other tanks in modern service. It needs its own ammunition that only the UK can provide, meaning a logistical headache all onto itself compared to if the tank used NATO standard ammunition, and there's simply not enough of the ammunition around. So, in conclusion, the Challenger and the Abrams are not important, at least not at the moment. They were important in getting Germany to allow the Leopard 2s to get deployed to Ukraine. This is true. But as for the battlefield, then no, the Challenger and the Abrams are nowhere near as important as the Leopard 2s are. For 30 years, the Leopard 2s have proven to be the better vehicle of the three, especially when compared to the Abrams. There really isn't any competition. The Leopard 2 is superior to the Abrams M1A2. And if Ukraine can send their troops to Germany to get trained, all the better. Then quality would be absolutely ensured. The number one argument brought up by fans of the Abrams, despite all the competitions and trials, is in the end that it has served in two wars in Iraq, fighting inferior Soviet tanks that never were the best that the Soviet Union could produce to begin with. Soviet tanks without night vision, Soviet tanks with hand cranked turrets with poorly trained and commanded crews. The wars in Iraq have proven that the Abrams of the 90s was superior when compared to old Soviet vehicles from the 70s. That's about it. Not without relevance, of course, since the Abrams will be facing everything from T-54s to T-90s in Ukraine. But what the wars in Iraq truly provided the U.S. with, more crucially, was experience on how to keep an army at war operational and supplied. But the Iraq wars have little impact on how the Abrams compares to the Leopard 2. But the Abrams has one massive advantage, numbers, and quantity is truly a quality onto its own. An easy example is in a shootout, where if one soldier runs out of ammunition and the other does not, it is quite clear that quantity is important. And this moves us on to the true strength of the US Armed Forces, the industrial might of the United States, the true source of its military power. The Abrams is not the best tank, but it is a good tank and the US has thousands of them. The Bradley isn't the best IFB, it's an okay IFB, but the US has thousands of them. The US doesn't have the best trained soldiers, doesn't use the best equipment, doesn't have the best vehicles. There are exceptions obviously, like aircraft carriers and the F-22 and so on. But as a rule, the US military doesn't have exceptional equipment and gear. It's adequate. It's okay, and it works, like with every other Western military, I should add. What they do have is numbers. The US military has a lot of everything, and has a lot of good stuff. And this has been the case for almost 100 years. During World War II, the US supplied not only their own armies and fleets and air force with vehicles and equipment, they supplied the armed forces of the UK and the Soviet Union as well, 
it was the industrial might of the US that defeated Germany in World War II. And nothing the US made was really exceptional when compared to what the Germans or Japanese had in their arsenal. But the US had good enough equipment, at times really good, and even very good in the odd case. But what they truly had was numbers. The US had a lot of everything, so much so that they could arm not only their own troops, but also the troops of the UK and the Russians. And that was the reason why the Allies won over Germany and Japan in World War II. And even to this day, this is still true. Fighting the US armed forces is not about overcoming their tanks or their aircraft. That is doable. A stealth fighter can still be tracked with ordinary radar. The problem is when you need a more advanced radar, you can guide a missile on the target. But technically, you can use old school anti-aircraft guns to shoot down a stealth fighter because stealth technology cannot hide from basic radar systems. So, it's not necessarily technology that gives the US an edge, even though it's nice to have superior technology, obviously. What truly gives the US an edge is its industrial might, the ability to build a lot of whatever you've got. So when you have 1,000 pieces of something that is good, you don't really need 10 pieces of something that is excellent. So how does this matter for Ukraine? Well, Ukraine will lose tanks in a war. Russia will be able to take out Leopard 2s just as they will destroy Challengers and Abrams, losses that will need to be replaced. And now is when the numbers game begins in earnest. And now is when the Abrams truly begins to shine. Because there are more than enough Abrams around to handle losses in Ukraine. Something that countries with Leopard 2s will be hard pressed to keep up with without depleting their own fleets of tanks. But then, the Ukraine would still be stuck with the logistical requirements and difficulties of the Abrams. So even if Ukraine receives all the Abrams they need, it could still end up being for nothing, since Ukraine would potentially have trouble providing them with all the fuel, spare parts and trained specialists needed to keep so many Abrams operational. So, in the end, Ukraine is still better off with Leopard 2s. Leopard 2s that are used to land one or two decisive blows that would shorten the war and end it quickly. Because Leopard 2 replacements can't be relied upon in a prolonged war. And the Abrams is simply too difficult to keep operational over time and in large numbers for any country that isn't the United States. And the Challenger 2s, well, there's too few around and not enough ammunition to fight a war with Russia. So, there is all this talk about the Abrams going to Ukraine, but that isn't important. That is why there is no urgency in getting the 31 Abrams into play. That is why it will take forever before they even end up in Ukraine. What the US did when they committed the Abrams was convince Germany to commit the Leopard 2s, the tank that Ukraine truly needs to win this war. The better tank, the more dangerous tank, the tank that requires less logistics and can be repaired easily and does not require insane amounts of fuel. Ukraine needs Leopard 2s to win this war, and they are getting them thankfully. And we must not forget that they are getting the tanks they need in the end because the US made it happen. That is it for now, a fun video that you shouldn't take all too seriously. It's just a reflection on how the Abrams has handled itself when put right next to the Leopard 2. Like I said in the beginning, the Leopard, Abrams and Challenger are all full capable main battle tanks and they will cause huge problems for Russia in Ukraine. With that, I'll see you in the next one. Kupomarsh, Ukraine.